He's worthy of our praise. We're going to sing this song to invite him, the weight of his presence to fall. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot going on, but his presence, oh, the things of earth, as it says, will go strangely to him. No, it's, it's glorious when he comes. And we praise his name. So glad you're with us. He's worthy of our praise, and we're going to give him glory tonight. Stay tuned. We have a message from Pastor Gary Cross coming up here real soon. We wanted to sing a song first. A lot's going on in our nation. We've had, just had the election. A lot's going on in our church. But we want to say this. We're thankful for his presence that's with us and all that, and he's with us tonight where we are. Can we worship the Lord? We just want to invite the weight of his glory to fall in this house, come in this place. If you had the ability, could you stand and let's just give him praise tonight. Shofar is blowing. I think it's number 12. Is that number 12, sister? I, that's not the right song. It is a, I think it's number 12, isn't it? We'll try. I may have written down there. If I wrote down the wrong number, forgive me. That's it. Thank you, Lord. You are sovereign, Lord. You are worthy. And we give you praise and invite you here. We invite you to move over our nation, dear God. We've elected new leaders. But, Lord, it has to be you that goes up with us or we're not going to make it. Oh, as a church, dear God, unless you go up with us, we're not going to make it. In every hurting heart tonight, minister, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Seek your face, Father.
gathered here two or three more than that and you are in the midst and lord your glory is here we just celebrate you lord and we bless you jesus you are worthy of praise lord you have to do the work but we believe you for it and we thank you lord in jesus name thank you lord amen amen we'll go through go into the announcements here for those on the internet we love you we know we got some in our church that are need ministry and we Pray and bless. And Sister Opal, if you're watching, we just prayed for you, praying for you. Believe in good, believe in good for so others, um, the Shelly and Justin, the family, and Alan driving. So many others. I know put needs out. I'm, I'm going to miss some, but I know God cares about each one, and we're believing. He's a big God. He's ministering in this place. All right. So we um, Mentioned several things. Friday night will be a nice time. Friday night at 7 o'clock. Be there on Oak Street, South Oak Street in Russellville. Uh, Pastor Gary and Sister Ruth have uh, got a lot of lot of good stuff coming. So, And uh, we believe the Lord's presence will be there for good food, good a good fellowship, and good ministry, good, good word. So that's this Friday, November 8th at 7 o'clock there. If you need any, have any questions, please ask. We also put it out for the shoe boxes. Show it. Show our shoe box here. That ministry is awesome. It'll be due in two and a half weeks. If I've got my math right, we'll take up those shoe boxes and pray for them and send them to the kids that need it. And uh, if you're not with, uh, if you're not even in the area, it is a um, you know nationwide ministry. So it is something you can check out. Uh, we do have a vote for those who are members in the church on Sunday after a, a, after the AM service for for a potential land sale. So if you're a member, we're putting that out there. We do remind us of nursing home in a week and a half. Uh, this coming Sunday night will be Terry. We had Terry to go, and then the following Sunday afternoon will be Al. Al's going to share at the nursing home, so he's he's looking forward, and so we'll look forward as well. And uh, we've talked a little bit about doing something soon later this month, and we'll get more details to you real soon on that. All right. I think that covers pretty well. I cheated a little bit, Pastor. I, I checked on it a little bit, what you're sharing, and going into the kings there a little bit. So I, I'm excited for what he's going to share. Appreciate so much what they do and, and the ministry of brother and sister. God bless you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. We have... Uh... We have been full of election. We've been watching um, stuff about the election for two months, and uh, I'm full up. I'm done. I I, I don't. Well, there, I was telling sister earlier today. Uh, there's one thing about this election. I have learned words I didn't even know existed. And I'm not going to try to say it again, so y'all just forgive me. But, but uh, there's some there there's words that they're throwing around out there. I finally had to break down, and look it up, and to find out what they're talking about. And uh, they were interviewing a a minister today or last night, yesterday. I don't. They, it's off so much. Um, they called him Reverend. I have no idea who he was. Called him Reverend. And he started throwing this word around, and he used it seven or eight times in, in, in one sentence. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking, that boy looked it up today so he could use it uh, he, so he could use it tonight so he could remember what it was. He didn't know what it was neither. Because I, I, you know, you know if, you, if you don't know something, use it in a sentence, 
then you can remember it. I thought, yeah, that's what he done. He looked it up himself. He, he's cheated. But uh, there, there's one thing I, I have learned, uh, learned some um, new, new words. They were good words. I mean, I mean don't, don't, don't get me wrong on that. They were was, was some good words. But uh, we give God glory. Uh, I'm going to tell you, some, some people are sad, happy, some people are sad. But I can tell you this without a doubt in my heart. God's will was done last night. Whether, whether who, you, who you wanted won or who, who you uh, wanted didn't win, God's will was done. Because the scripture says that God builds up kings and tear down kings. So uh, uh, it, it wasn't our vote that made the difference. It was God's will in this thing that made the difference in this. And we give God glory for, for all that's done. And I'm going to tell you something. Something the world was praying for this. The, the world around uh, in, yesterday in uh, uh, Shiloh, Israel, they had a prayer meeting there with the, uh, not with the Christians, but with the, with the Orthodox Jews. They gathered there and was praying for this election. Uh, they, they were praying about it in, in Australia. Uh, they were praying about it. They had been Worldwide, there are people praying. There are nations being praying about this thing, and uh, so God's will was completed last night, and we honor Him for it all. Uh, he is worthy. I'm, I'm getting one now, brother. So it, it all happens at the same time. Uh, all right. Yeah, here. Bury this thing or something, because this gonna do it again. I don't ever get phone calls, so it's waste waste till I get up here. I uh, want to uh, go to Second Chronicles and uh, uh, chapter 20. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at Jehoshaphat and uh, the, uh, the world or the, 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 the nations that had come against Israel at that time, and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll go to Second Chronicles 20, uh, verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to jump down to 18 through 26. So y'all keep up with me. When you have it in your Bible, say amen. amen. Reading. It happened after that that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. They are, they are in, I, I, I got this wrote down someplace, Ahazaran Tamar. Uh, which is in, in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. Going down to eight, verse 18 in reading. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all, is, all of Judah and the is, uh, inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the, Israel, uh, the Levites and the children of Koh uh well, huh? Uh, yeah, them. Uh, the Korites and the children of the uh, Korites stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with their voice, uh, uh, voices loud and high. So they arose early in the morning and went out to, into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And, then, and when he had counseled with them, uh, with the people, he appointed those who should sing uh, to the Lord, and who shall praise the, uh, praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the armies, of, of, uh, armies saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they had begun to sing and uh, sing to the pray, sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. The people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly to kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. 
So then Judah came to, play, came to a place overlooking the wilderness, and they looked toward the multitude, and there were the dead, bo dead bodies fallen to the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away their, their spoils, they found, uh, uh, they found among them an, an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off, the, them, off themselves more than they could carry away. So they were three days gathering the spoils because, because of, there was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barach and for there, uh, there they blessed the Lord before the, before the name of the place was called the Valley of Barak until this day. Father, we exalt you and praise you. We honor you. Holy is your name and worthy. We honor you. Father, we ask your blessing upon this. We ask, Father God, you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, that we may worship you in spirit and truth. We honor you for it all. We do it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, this, these are well-worn uh, scriptures. We, we've heard these scriptures over and over again. Uh, we've heard the story told many times how uh, God caused, the, the, the God had, had caused them to fight against one another and to destroy one another. But I want to, I want to look at this one more time. Uh, look at this, this one more time. Maybe we can see something a little bit different there. We, we know that the nations had come against uh, Jehoshaphat in, in uh, Judea. They had come to fight and they had came down and, in, and encamped themselves in a valley just uh, right at the Dead Sea, just below the Dead Sea. And Jehoshaphat was warned. He was told, told the nations have come against you, and uh, they come against you to fight. And he, he knew that Israel was never been going to be able to, to fight these people, was never going to be able to defeat them by themselves. So the first thing he done is he went to the Lord and he fell, fell on the ground before the Lord and he sought God's help. He sought God uh, uh, in this thing with, with prayer and fasting. But let's, let's go to uh, verse 14 for here just a minute. Let's see what the scripture says. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait on, there you go. Uh, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon, now I, I'm going to try these names, these Hebrew names, uh, and then we're going to go back for just a minute. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Ahakazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Yahel, the son of Mahatayah, uh, a Levite of the son of Asphah, in the midst of the assembly. And he, he said, listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you: Do not be afraid nor dismayed, because this is a great because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Now, before we go on, I want I'm going to go back up and, and look at these things. Look at these these names in verse uh, 14. And I'm going to go backwards if I can, because there's something important we need to see about their name. Uh, it says Asper, which was the, the last one. He was the, the great grandfather of all these people. Uh, it says Asaph, Asaph uh, had a son. Asaph's name means collector. Asaph means collector. Had a son. His name, gift of God. Who had a son, carried away of God. Who had a son, Yah Yaha. Yah, uh, well, wait a minute. Yah has built. Who had a son, Yah has remembered. Who had a son beheld of God, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The collector had a son who had a son who came up and, and he was beheld or behold of God. He was, God looked upon him and the Spirit of God came upon him. It, 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 you can see God moving for generations to get this, this child in a, or this young man in a position that God could move upon him and, and, and uh, talk to the nation through him. He said, he said, because you collect your family together and bring your family together and, and said, and I'm going to give you a gift from me, a son. 
and, and, and your, his son is going to be carried away by the glory that's in me. Who, uh, who, has, who, who, uh, who had a son that Yah has built. I have built him up. He is a man of God. He is, he is strong before me. I have built him up. Who had a son, Yah remembered. Because I remember the promise I made to the collector that I'm going to do something through him. I have made that and I remembered him. So I have... He has had a son that I want to behold, a a son that I can behold so that God can move through him. We we move past these names so quickly that we we forget that that the name that they put up on these children means something to God. So we don't need to do that. Now let's go to verse 15. We need to go to verse 15. Uh, I'm I'm going to read 15 on... this is Gary's version. This is out of Second uh, Gary uh, chapter 20, and this will be verse 15. Second Gary. Uh, Listen, all you who live in this country, all you who live in this city, and you leaders, mayors, governors, senators, presidents, do not be afraid nor discouraged, terrified because of this recession, because of sickness, trials, the lies and the threats, or whatever has come against this, come against you or this country. For the, the battle is not yours, but it's God. And the word battle is warfare. This warfare is not yours. It's God's. God chose to take up the battle, this warfare, in, in this country. God has put his blessing upon this country. He's blessed this nation. He did it a long time ago, and, and he's still blessing this nation. There was, there was one uh, man, man said, stood up, and he said, this is no longer a Christian nation. Let me tell you something. That was a lie that came out of him. This nation is still a Christian nation. God's still blessing this country. His blessing is still upon this country, and God is still protecting this country no matter what he says. But I tell you this, it says the warfare is not yours to fight. This is not your fight. I don't care whatever it is you're going through in your life, whether it be problems in your health, whether it be problems in your finances, whether it be problems in, in, in the, uh, according to law or, or court, court dates or whatever it is, no matter what threat is against you, no matter what the devil's bring, bringing against you, the battle's not yours. This warfare is not yours. We, we want to hear that so much. This is, this is a, a, a battle cry that we long to hear inside of us. This, oh, I, I'm worried. I'm concerned. I, I, need, I need, but God said, it's not yours to fight. It's not yours to battle. We, we want to hear this message. But the, the, the battle is not ours. And we don't want to be discouraged. We don't want to have God to be discouraged in God. We want to trust him with all we've got. But the, it, we we won't, we don't want to move in fear. We don't want to move in fear. Let me tell you something. God doesn't bless fear. God doesn't bless fear. Don't call me in fear. Don't call me in disbelief, unbelief. Don't call me because I can't bless you in these things. Call me in faith. Call me in belief, and I can bless you. That's what God is saying to us. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Look what it says in, in uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, 20 and, and 21. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O, Jeru- o Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. You shall prosper. And when he had, had consulted with his people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the armies and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I want you to look at something in, uh, in, in verse 20. If you can go back up there for me, please, in, in verse 20. Verse 20. It says here, it says, uh, Hear me, O Ju- uh, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe, establish, and believe. 
They're all the same word. It's, they're all the same Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is, it, 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 and I, <laughs> I came, it, it is Amon. Amon. We say Amen. It, uh, amen. But it's, it's Amon. And it means to believe, to build up or support. When we talk about uh, believe the Lord your God, it's talking about trusting him, believing him, and he will support you. He will give you the support you need. When it talks about the establishment, the, the word is, is talking about uh, to, to firm up, to, uh, give you, to make you trustworthy, and, and make you faithful. So we have believe, which will God will, will give, let me, let me get back. God will support you, uh, give you support. And, and the word establishment, like I said, it's all the same word. When we, it, it's, it's not a play on word. It is a different voice of that, of that verb. And he's using it in a different, different voice. So he, he's saying, believe because he's going to establish you. He's going to, he's going to support you. He's going to make you faithful or, or, or dealing you faithfully. And then believe in, believe in his prophets. I, 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 I'm sorry. I just thought that was interesting. Now, that, that, that sounds, all of that sounds real good. The verse, uh, verse 20, all that sounds real good. Uh, but the battle, when, it sounds real good when the battle comes. It sounds real good in there. But I, I want you to, to look, look in uh, Psalms 13.1. My, my wife says, said, don't put so many scriptures in, in these things. Uh, people get tired of listening to you read. Uh, so I, I cut it back to only, what, 30, 40 verses, something like that. Um, so I, I cut all this back. Uh, look what it says in, in verse uh, 13, 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? See, in, in verse 21, don't, you don't have to go back there. In verse 21, it, it said in here, uh, and when the, the, had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing, uh, sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. You, you hear the, the, the faith in their walk. You hear the faith in their song. You hear the faith in their worship. But, and, and again, like I was saying, it sounds real good to us. But the problem is, is when we start in our battle, our, our songs change. Our, our message starts to change. We start sounding more like David in Psalms 13. And look what it says. How long, O Lord, will you, for, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Verse 2, how long must I... Take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day. How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? And in verse 3, consider, the, consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. That, that sounds more like what we, what we go into battle with. We don't have this joyful uh, praise to God, bless his name, praise him in, in his holiness. We don't have that kind of faith. When we go into the battle, we're saying, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Why am I going into this? Why, why am I having to go through? We sound more like David in, in that psalm than we do in Jehoshaphat in, in, in uh, Chronicles. We sound like that uh, more and more. But I'm going to tell you something. Jehoshaphat uh, appointed uh, average men, just just every everyday people, just like you and I. He didn't appoint super. He didn't he didn't appoint uh, a, a a whole nation of Paul. Uh, he didn't he didn't appoint a whole nation of Davids. He didn't appoint all. He they were average ordinary people that that got out there and they were they dressed in in the in the. Uh, uh, suit the, the clothing of the priest they they dressed as that and they started marching out and they started to praise and started to worship they they done what what jehoshaphat had told them to do they were ordinary people 
They were on there, and I'm going to tell you something else. Too. I'm gonna, this is, this is a, a side note. This is from Gary. The, the singers and the, and the musicians went out ahead of the army. They were marching into battle before the army got there. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in that group, I'd be praising and worshiping God, too, a long time before I got there. Uh, I, I wouldn't sound like David. Oh, God, why am I? You know, there was a song a long time ago. Um, Brother Dwight probably remember this. It, it, it was a, a, a uh, it, it said uh, about, about the battle of uh, Little Bighorn. It said, uh, oh, Mr. Custard, I don't want to go. There's a red skin out there wanting to take my hair. Now, see that, that kind of attitude? It's what we go to. We, we go into battle. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be in this. But not these men. Not these men. They went into this battle with faith. They went into this battle with trusting in the, God, in the Lord. They went in this battle with all the faith that they had, and they knew that, that when I get there, God is going to protect me. They knew that ahead of time. So and we know the story. Uh, they, the, the Lord caused the, 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 the enemy to turn on one another. They killed one another, destroyed everything, and it took three days to, to pick up the, the, the spoils of that, battery, uh, of that battle. But it was God's mercy and, and faith in him that made the difference. But I think, that, I think we miss the most important thing of, of this whole uh, chapter, of this whole book. We miss that, that most important part of this whole thing. And it's one word. It's one word that we miss. Look, look go with me uh, to uh, 2022. It said, now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. The word began is, is kalal, kalal. It, 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 it has, uh, let, let, me, let me read it here. Uh, the word halal means to begin. It has the imagery of a wedge being driven in. Let that sink in just a minute. It has the imagery of a wedge being driven in. Now, think about this. Uh, the, the armies of, of Moab and, and the Amorites are, are, are coming against them, and the darkness that had, had covered Israel, the fear that had covered Israel over these, over these the enemy that had come in there. And God, and when they began, claw, God drove a wedge in that darkness, and that wedge cracked, open the, cracked it open so that the, that the uh, faith of, of Israel, the Judah, could break down what was in front of them. It was the beginning, that kalah. It was because they began. If they never began to sing, if they never began to praise, if they never do, began to do anything, there would have never been the wedge that would have broken it open so that God could do something against the enemy because the fear of, of who they... of. Uh, uh, Judah had, was so strong against uh, over these that there were, they, God couldn't do anything in there. Don't come to me with your fear. Don't come with me with your, uh, your uh, hesitation, your unbelief. But he said, if you'll believe, begin to believe. And he drove a wet, they drove a wedge in the darkness that was there, and God broke it open so that, that faith could enter in and do what faith does for us. And God wants to drive that wedge in for us. He wants us to begin, to begin to trust, begin to have faith, begin to speak words of faith to him so that he can drive the wedge into our, our darkness and in the things that are, we're coming against us. He says, if you will begin with me, I will drive the wedge in. Let me look. Let me go on. Deuteronomy 2, 24, 25. Now, uh, baby, I, I apologize right now. I've got... Lots of verses here. Uh, verses 24, 25. Raise, raise, take your journey, cross over the river Ammon. Look, I have given into your hand Shion, and, and, uh, Shion the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and engage in him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread of fear upon you, upon the nations and under the whole, uh, whole heaven, and you shall 
be, uh, you shall hear the report of you and, the, and shall tremble and be anguished because of you. Let me stop right there and let's, let's bring this out of, out of the antiquities of Israel and bring it in here today. If my people who are called by my name will repent and see, God is saying, I need you to do something so I can drive a wedge. Once God drives the wedge in the world around us, they will fear us. Not because of our airplanes and because of our mighty armies or, or the nukes that we have or the ability to destroy, but they will, will fear us because they'll say, God is on their side. I see God do something for them. God, only God can do what they've done. And that, that wedge in there will draw fear around the world and nobody will come against us, not because of our president, not because of our armies, not because of our navy. It's because God has showed himself mighty here. He, we need to have a wedge drawn into the darkness of the world around us and let the world fear us through, the, through God himself who is blessing us. Second Chronicles 29, 27. Now, Hezekiah is restoring the temple, uh, uh, temple worship. So that is a footnote here. Let me go on. Then Hezekiah commanded them to offer the burnt offering on the altar. And when they uh, burnt the offering, the, uh, and when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began. So we see here the the halal, the beginning there, the, the wedge that's being driven in uh, with the trumpets and the instruments of David, king, uh, king of Israel. So all the assembly worshiped and singers sang and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had finished offering, the king and all who were present with him bowed and worshiped. They bowed and worshiped. Moreover, King Hezekiah and the leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord with the words of David and Asher, Asaph, the seer. So they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshiped. Because Hezekiah was willing, and the people were willing to begin, he commanded, but they didn't have to begin. He commanded, he said, this is what we need to do. But it's only when they began that the wedge was drawn in and the world feared them. All the world at that time feared Israel at that moment in that time because God was moving, God was blessing. There was nothing the world could do against them at that time. Now look at uh, 2 Chronicles 31, and, and this one I really do apologize and Hezekiah appointed the division of the priests and Levites according to the division, each man according to his service. The priests and the Levites for burning offerings and peace offerings to serve, to give thanks, and to praise and in the gates of the camp of our Lord. The king also appointed a portion of his possessions uh, for the burnt offerings, for the morning and the evening offerings, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbath and for the new moons and the setting, uh, set feast, as is written in the law of the Lord. Moreover, he commanded that the people who dwell in Jerusalem to com contribute support for the priests and Levites, that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance of fir uh, first fruits of grain and wine, oil, honey, and all the produce of the field. They brought in abundance. Uh, abundantly the tithe of everything and the children of Israel and Judah who dwell in the cities brought the tithe of oxen and sheep also tithe of holy things which were consecrated to the Lord their God uh, they laid it laid in heaps and in the in the third month they began saying uh, laying them in heaps and they finished in the seventh month now look at that they they started they started uh, they done this for three months or four months. They done this for four months. They 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 started bringing this stuff in for four months. They started obeying God and obeying the law. They started bringing the the tithe and the offerings and and what was commanded through the law. They started bringing this stuff into the temple and they started piling it up in heaps. Look, and when Hezekiah the le and the leaders uh, came and saw the he heaps. They blessed the Lord and his people, his people Israel. When Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps, and Ahazariah, the chief priest uh, from the house of Zadok, 
uh, answered and said to him, Since the people began to bring in the offerings unto the house of the Lord, we, had, we have had enough to eat and plenty left. For the Lord has blessed his people, and what is left is, in, is great abundance. When we begin to, to do what God asks us to do, when we begin to do what God has commanded us to do in our heart, when we begin to obey God, God blesses us. And he blesses us to the point that we're able to bless others. We're other to, we're, we, are, uh, ble- we are commanded and we begin and then we're able to bless in abundance to somebody else. We don't, we're not be lacking because black God is blessing. And because we begin to bless, God says, I'm going to bless you. You give and God's going to bless. That, that, is, that is the law of tithing. That is the law of giving. That is the law of, uh, of offerings to the church. Is that when you start to give, when you begin to give, God begins to give. When you begin in your offering, your tithing, your offering, God blesses you that you can bless somebody else. God blesses in abundance. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Now, you're, you're saying, where'd that come from? Uh, in the Hebrew, in the context, the word kael has other meanings. And a part of that meaning uh, is, is profane and defiled. If we look, if we look at, at the opening wedge, we can also see, see how it fits in our overall foundation. He was wounded. He was kalal. He was profaned for us that that wedge or that 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 uh, profanity or that profoundness that came upon him wedged open God so that we could enter in there was no way that we could come into the temple there was no way we were allowed to go in there but it was because Jesus uh Hid the wedge that he allowed in his life, the, the wounding of his body, that wedge opened up the, the temple that we may go in. That wedge opened it up for you and I. Exodus 31, 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes, it shall surely be put to death. For everyone who, everyone that does any work on it, that person shall be cut off and uh, from among his people. Let me go on. Isaiah 56, 6. Also the young, the, the sons of the foreigners who joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. To his own servants, everyone who keeps, uh, keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds my covenant, uh, even him I shall bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Burnt offerings, uh, sac- offerings and sacrifice will be acceptable at my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. Th- this defilement is what keeps us away from God. It separates us from God. This, this wedge uh, in this, the kalal at this moment says, I'm going to wedge you away from him. I, I, we drive that when we when we defile God's house, when we when we are irreverent in His house, when we defile God, uh, the 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 gathered together in His name, when we defile that, we wedge ourselves away from God. God says, "I can't be in a, amongst it. I can't be a part of this." So He we wedge ourselves away from Him. That kalah works both directions. It can open up a, a, a way for us, but it can shut the way for us too. It also will close the door behind us. It's like the the door stop that you drive up under the door. You drive it underneath there. You can't open that door. And, and we drive that that door stop under the door, and we cannot open that door. And, and the Lord will not force himself in that door until we choose to, to stop ir- being irreverent in his house, stop from uh, defiling his, his house, the house of prayer. When we stop doing these things, God will open up the door. We will remove that wedge and enter in. Uh, to be blessed or to be cursed, it all, is, it all is in the beginning with us. When we begin, we can begin to curse or we can be, begin to bless. It all be, the best on what we choose to begin with. If we begin to raise our voice to God in praise, God will bless. If we begin to profane and defile his name in his house, God will curse. It's all up to us. How do we choose to do these things? It's all based on us. 
God, as when the people of Judah start to began to sing, it says that, that God started to move. It, it wasn't that the army ever moved. It, the army was still back there. It said, but when the when the uh, the anointed singers began to sing, God done it. It, it was the it was the beginning that done it. We can cause God to bless us just because we began to worship Him, because we began to praise and to worship. These things cause God to move in in, in our behalf. But it's also if we begin to be irreverent, if we begin to defile His house, if we if we begin to to do things in this in this house as a house of prayer that makes it contrary to that, God will stop the blessing right there. It's up to us. It's up to us. I'm done. Stand with me. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we exalt you. Holy is your name. We give you praise. Father, teach us. Teach us, Father God, that our beginning it starts with praise. Our beginning starts with worship. Our beginning starts with a song of holiness to you. Our, our beginning starts when we praise you in the beauty of your holiness. Father, teach us that we may know truly what that's all about. Lord, that we may stand before you, that we may stand in your presence. Lord, that we will never cause this house to be defiled. That we'll never uh, cause this house to be anything but a house of prayer. And we'll give you the glory and presence and praise for you. We honor you. And we're talking to you. We're talking to those out there in, in, the, in the cyber world. It's up to you. Where do you want to begin that? You want to begin with God's blessing or do you want to begin with God's cursing? It's all up to you. It's where you begin. Because if you fail to do anything but praise him and worship him, you're, you're calling curses upon you because you're causing that wedge to, to stand between you and God. Begin to worship him. Begin to praise him, and he will bless you. Thank you, brother. I catch you unaware every time, don't you? And I agree with that, Father God. For those that need to make a new beginning, dear God, to begin again, Lord, you are able to make us born again. And if there's anyone watching, Father, that needs to make it right with you, what a good time it is. Well, we pray that they do that in Jesus' name, that they accept the leading of the Spirit and begin to, to follow you, dear God, and, and turn their lives over to you because, Lord, we can't do it on our own. It must be you, and we trust you, dear God, that you're going to draw men and women to yourself even now. Anyone that needs to listening tonight, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just commit all these to you, that, Lord, you do have good things for us. You do want to drive that wedge for us right where it needs to go, Lord God, as we go into battle. And, Lord, we believe that for all those who are watching going into battle right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you. We'll see you soon in Christian life. God bless you. He's good.